hometown of Pasadena. Uh, this is the end of my tour. I started out in New York about two weeks ago and uh, make it out to the left coast now. Um, I was in Phoenix this morning and yesterday it was like 100 degrees and it was uh, 103 when I came through El Centro and uh, I came over the mountains and all of a sudden, you know, it, uh, it's feeling pretty good. So uh, it's nice to be here. Um, since I've been traveling, I've been reading a lot of my competitors, um, and I can only equivocally uh, recommend them. Um, but I, I've read the new Michael, I started reading the new Michael Gruber book, which is just out, and it, it looks like it's really going to be excellent. And um, I just uh, finished the, um, uh, I've I, I finished, I started the Gruber book, and I also started the the, uh, the Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest. And The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest is, is, is complicated because the first two books I really like, and this book I like, but I can feel it's going to take a while to get going because he's got a lot of stuff to explain. And so I'm only like 100 pages into it, and it hasn't started rolling downhill yet. Um, but... but uh, I was told by somebody that about 250, it really starts to go. <laughs> but but the guy the guy is such an interesting writer, and the stories are so complicated and interesting. I wish I had thought of the idea of having one of my characters in a menage a trois, because especially a friendly menage a trois, you know, where the guy goes and says hello to the husband and then checks the wife out for the night, because it seems like it'd make a nice complicated situation that would be you know that would have a lot of psychological stuff going on. I had. Uh, I, I was in Phoenix last night, and I did a, a, a talk like this, but I was talking with Tom Perry, uh, a thriller writer who lives up in Los Angeles. He's got a new book out called Strip, and uh, in it, one of the heroes of the book is a police lieutenant who has two families, two marriages going at the same time, both in the L.A. basin, unbeknownst to each other, and one of the reasons that he told these families that they really didn't couldn't spend very much money because they don't know that he's actually got two families going was because he was saving the money for uh, college education for the kids because he's got two sets of kids um, and, and the way he gets away with this is by telling people he's working undercover I got to go away for three days to work undercover and then he's really over with the other family and uh, but now the kids are all 18 <laughs> and college has arrived and he's got to find some money in a big hurry because uh, because he doesn't have it um, and uh, I wish I'd thought of that. I, I like the idea of somebody with, with you know, with two families, uh, you know, unbeknownst to each other, and you know, some guy wildly scrabbling around. And, and this, this has gone on for 18 years. And um, and so it was. We had a good time last night. Uh, Tom and I talking about each other's books and and what we done. It was it was kind of fun. Uh, this is my 20th uh, prey book. I think it's likely that there are going to be two more and only two more. Uh, the next one could be called Forgotten Prey, although everybody boos that when they hear the title. Um, and the following one after that would be Final Prey, I think. But I don't know if, if that's going to happen, but I think it's probably going to happen that way. Because the fact of the matter is, I'm just getting tired of doing it. Um, I'm just kind of worn down. I'm 66 years old. There's some more stuff I'd like to do in my life. I'm committed to writing other books with a number of people anyway. So... Uh, I think that the I think the prey series may be coming to an end. Uh, people ask me in the final book if I'm going to kill off Davenport, um, and I tell them what my editor said, which is, if you kill off Davenport, you also kill off your backlist and a couple million dollars. Um, so I'm not going to kill off Davenport. Uh, I'm going to leave open the possibility that there will be another prey book or another Davenport-oriented book at some time in the future. But I think I think two more preys is probably going to be it. And, I, and I've actually been saying this on this tour because that kind of psychologically commits me to only two more, and then, and then I can't kind of weasel out of it, um, which, of course, will depend on what the stock market does and stuff. But, um, uh, the third book that I've been reading this w uh, week is Lee Child's new book, um, and we were, this coming Sunday, we will be one and two on the, uh, on the best New York Times bestseller list. Unfortunately, I'm two and he's one, but we've been going, going mano a mano for a while, and and, and the lady in the Phoenix bookstore yesterday said, you know, that we just have different arcs of the career. I was doing three weeks at number one a few years ago, and now he's going to be number one for a while. And then, you know, you kind of slide down, and a new writer comes up, and they kind of go across. Um, I think so. He's a really good writer. Um, unlike some people, he's grammatical. 
Uh, you know, the stories flow and they have a good action to them. Uh, the reason I can't unequivocally recommend this book is because it's a to be continued, which drives me crazy. Uh, uh, it, it's a good book, but when it ended, I couldn't figure out what happened. And I, and I you know, now I got to wait till November. He's, the, the second part of the book is coming out in November, and um, and it it should be also a, a you know a number one book because the the, the story he's got going is a very good one. And uh, I have to say that I I pretty much read it through in one airplane ride and. It, it's a it's a nice piece. Um, so um, I met an old friend who, who had come back to L.A. from London a few weeks ago or a few months ago, and uh, uh, she had been a newspaper reporter at the in St. Paul at the same time I did, and then she moved to L.A. and she wrote a screenplay which actually got produced. Um, and so, but then she had to quit writing screenplays because her husband was the bureau chief at, at the Los Angeles Times. Um, and, and, excuse me, was a bureau chief in Los Angeles for the Wall Street Journal. And, and since he covered entertainment, it was a conflict of interest, so she stopped writing screenplays. Um, now she, uh, she's back, and uh, the conflict no longer exists, and she, and she would like to get back into writing screenplays. So a few months ago, she said, why don't I adopt one of your books as a, as a screenplay? And so... Uh, and you know, and she wanted me to write along with her so that it would sort of have you know my name on it and her name on it, and we'd we'd write this screenplay. We did um, of Dead Watch, which is a book we wrote a, a, a few years ago, three or four years ago. We sent it off to the agent, and it was just like dropping it into a well. We never even heard a splash. I mean, it was like nothing happened. We dropped it into the well, and it's gone. So, uh, so we're not, we we decided to think things over a bit, and uh, and. Uh, uh, I kept telling her that I didn't think screenplays were the right thing to do because there's not enough money in it, especially if you're splitting the money. <coughs> and it takes so long to get anything done there. And, you know, with a book, you know right away what's going to happen. Are they going to publish it or not? Are they going to pay you money for it or not? You find out within weeks. I mean, uh, uh, with even really good movie scripts, it can take years and years to get them produced, uh, even after the sale. And I, I, I'm just not that patient. And so... We started looking around for another project, and and we noticed that a lot of authors are migrating over to young adult novels. Uh, Patterson is over there doing young adult novels. My old friend Carl Hyacin is doing kids' novels, although a little bit younger than young adult. Um, and there's just a lot of people, and Stephanie Meyer sold 25 million copies of her books last year. Uh, so I read a couple of young adult, popular young adult uh, books last year, or in the last few weeks, doing research for the possibility of writing a young adult book. One of them was called uh, The Knife of Never Letting Go and its sequel, and the other one was called Hunger Games and its sequel. Both of them a little science fiction-y, kind of off in a little strange territory a little bit. Uh, both of them focused on, on girls, because I think girls read more books than boys do at that age, at the 15 to 18 age. And, I, and the books absolutely shocked me. They, they are, are shocking books. They're much more violent than my books, which I couldn't believe. I mean, you know, because people have said, you know, your books are really violent. I read these books, and these books are terribly violent. The Hunger Games is actually about a kind of gladiatorial game in which, in which children are pitted against each other to, to kill each other until, you know, 26 of them until there's only one left. Uh, and uh, other than that, it's uh, violence nudity, no sex, no bad language, romance and shopping. Those are the key elements. Uh, the, the, uh, and fashion, if that shopping fashion, going to places and getting expensive clothes. Uh, but, but the thing is, is that it's some kind of reflection on the way our culture works, I think, because you're not a lot, I mean, one of the young girls in the, in the Hunger Games, the main character in the Hunger Games, grew up in a desperately poor, violently repressed uh, coal mining community in which nobody says a bad word. Uh